Hi. Today I'd like to discuss a, another common example of mechanical systems and mechanical vibrations. This is Dane Quinn from the University of Akron, and today's lecture will focus on base excitation. So here's the problem, right? We have a mass, we have a spring, we have a damper, just as always, and it's attached to a base. However, that base is no longer fixed in the ground. Instead, it moves with some specified displacement. Now, I'm going to go through the modeling fairly quickly on this. Um, and in particular, I'll go ahead and give you a lot of the coordinates, the directions I and J. Z will describe the relative displacement across this spring and damper, right? So the forces in the spring and damper will be dependent on Z. And X will describe the position of the block with respect to the ground. And finally, again, U of T is the displacement of the base. So when we look at this, the acceleration of the block is naturally written in terms of X, right? Because X measures the position of the block with respect to the ground. And when we look at momentum balance, we have to take the acceleration with respect to inertial space, or in this case, ground, right? So remember, inertial space is a frame of reference that doesn't move. So clearly the base here would not be a suitable place for the origin, right? Because again, the base moves. The ground though is fixed, and so it has zero acceleration, and it's considered an inertial reference frame. If we want to write the acceleration of the block, it's the acceleration of the block is x double dot in the i direction. Right? So again, x is the natural coordinate for the motion. When we look at the forces, though, right, these forces and in the spring and damper, well, they're naturally written in terms of Z. Because these depend on the relative displacement across the spring and damper. Or between the block and the base. So that would be Z. Z again measures the stretch in the spring. These are all related because notice that X is U plus L plus Z. So X dot is U dot plus Z dot. And likewise for the acceleration, X double dot is equal to u double dot plus z double dot. And just start taking derivatives. So now, again, going back, looking at the forces that act on this system, we really just have one force acting on the block from this combined spring and damping element. Right, so that's going to be Fs plus F, D. These two are, after all, in parallel. These forces depend on Z, right? So we can write those. The spring force is minus K times Z in the I direction, and the damping force is minus B times Z dot, again, in the I direction. So, as a result, we can apply linear momentum balance. Some of the forces equals mass times acceleration of the block. Right? So we'll kind of gray that out. And now we'll fill in the details. So the acceleration is, again, we said x double dot in the i direction. The forces, well, that's going to be minus k times z in the i direction, that's the spring force, and the damping force is minus b times z dot in the i direction. So, 
looking at the i direction, we see that minus k times z minus b times z dot is m times x double dot, right? Or, kind of rewriting this, m x double dot plus b times z dot plus k times z is equal to zero. So if you look carefully, we actually still have two different coordinates here. We have x that describes the acceleration, while z describes the forces. And so the acceleration is described actually with a different coordinate from the forces that act on the block. Notice here that right now it almost looks like there's no forcing. I don't have an f of t over here on the right. But again, the fact that these coordinates are different will, in fact, introduce a forcing term into this equation. So here I've written everything again, right? This was the equation of motion that we came up with in terms of x and z. And then here's my coordinate relationship. So again, x is equal to L plus U plus C. I can write this equation either in terms of x or in terms of z. Right? So let's start off with x. Right? So in terms of x of t, right? so again, that's the absolute displacement of the block. Well, we get mx double dot plus b times z dot. Here, z is x dot minus u dot. And then k times z. Well, z is x minus u minus l equals 0. So we can simplify this. Let's put all the x stuff on the left, mx double dot bx dot plus kx, and then everything in terms of u and l and u dot go on the other side. So this becomes b times u dot, right, from here, plus k times u plus k times l. And this is the equation of motion in terms of x. So the forcing here arises from the motion of the base. Now, let's do this in terms of z. This actually is a little cleaner because the only x component we have is in the acceleration. So x double dot is u double dot plus z double dot and then plus b times z dot plus k times z is equal to zero. Or, again, simplifying, let's put all the z terms over on the left. mz double dot plus b times z dot plus k times z is minus m u double dot times t. So again, in either case, the forcing in the equation of motion arises from the motion of the base. And I do want to make a distinction between the forcing in the equation and forces that are applied to the block. If we think back, the only forces that were applied to the block are from the spring and the damper. While the forcing in the equation of motion ends up arising from the motion of the base. So the fact that the forces are described differently than the acceleration with, inertial, with respect to inertial space is what gives rise to the motion of the block. Okay, so now let's be a little more specific. Assume that the base is moving harmonically. And so harmonic base motion. Well, we'll let u of t Right, so the motion of this base be equal to some amplitude, u naught, sine omega t. And so again, this base is just moving back and forth harmonically with amplitude u naught and frequency omega. Now we can calculate u dot. Right, so the derivative of this is u naught omega cosine omega t, and it, we're going to ultimately write the equation in terms of z. The acceleration of the base is u double dot, which is minus u 
not the amplitude, omega squared sine omega t. So using this, the equation of motion in terms of z, this relative coordinate, is m z double dot plus b times z dot plus k times z equals, well, minus m, but I have a minus here, so that becomes plus m u naught omega squared sine omega t. We can simplify this a little bit. Let's divide through by the mass. All right, so the first term is just z double dot b over m. That is 2 zeta omega n times z dot. k over m is just omega n squared, definition of the natural frequency. And then finally, these m's cancel out, and we get u naught omega squared sine omega t. So here, this is like our forcing amplitude. When we just looked at harmonic excitation, this was F naught. And of course, we have forcing frequency omega. The interesting thing to note here, which we'll look at in detail in the next lecture, is that the amplitude of the forcing depends on the square of the forcing frequency. And so that has important consequences for the motion of this system. Notice that if omega is low, right, so this base is barely moving, right, or moving back and forth slowly, then this forcing amplitude is really small. And so we would expect that z would be relatively small. z here, remember, measures the relative displacement. So in fact, if omega is small, I would expect that this block would essentially move along with the base. However, if omega becomes really large, then this forcing amplitude becomes really large as well, because again, it varies like omega squared. So there, some more interesting things happen, which will actually be the topic of our next lecture. Thanks a lot. As always, if you have comments or feedback, please let me know. And that's it for now. Take care. Bye.